Hello everyone, well, that's in today's second video. So we've already done snow watch, and you can find that um, on the snow watch page. We've got another dumping of snow to come tomorrow across uh, particularly northern England and probably up to southwestern parts of Scotland as well. Because some quite disruptive weather up there through the course of uh, tomorrow morning. So have a look at snow watch and see what you think to that. Uh, the second video is going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. So this takes us to around the 8th of January into the first week of the new year. So uh, we're going to be keeping things unsettled. And after a slightly sort of milder, less cold period over the new year weekend itself, it looks like next week probably will start to bring uh, colder conditions back in from the northern Atlantic again. Still no sign of a proper sustained sort of blocking feature setting up, locking us in to an extended spell of cold weather. But overall, it looks like we're going to keep it pretty cold, pretty changeable through the early part of the new year. And I'll talk you through all of that in a second. Just say that tonight we're going to go through the GFS Ensembles, doing Ensembles Watch. We'll have a look at all uh, 21 or 22 members, if we include the operational of the GFS, all 22 Ensemble members of the GFS Ensemble will see what we're all showing for the early part of January. But we'll begin for today's second video by having a look at the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart. So um, the black line here tells us where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red line's at the end where the GFS Ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. So this is just an index that's reflective of state of the atmosphere. It's not driving anything. It just tells you what the atmosphere is doing over the North Pole. So um, back in November, we went negative with the uh, Arctic Oscillation. We went for a sustained run of negativity for about a month from the middle of November to the middle of December. Then we went positive, went up here, uh, went up towards the Christmas period where we had a strong burst of positivity. Where we are now with the Arctic Oscillation is very close to neutral, really. And the GFS Ensemble, certainly for the next week, forecasting us to stay close to neutral. And then we get quite a big divergence. So some of these Ensemble members are going down into proper negative AO territory. Others are going into pro uh, proper positive AO territory. And this is taking us towards the end of the first week of January and into the second week of January. So quite a split there uh, in the extended range of the GFS ensembles. But certainly for the next week or so, week to 10 days, not really deviating all that far from where we are right now, which is quite close to uh, neutral condition. Remember, when you've got uh, a negative Arctic Oscillation, you'll have high pressure over the pole, you'll have blocking, and blocking is a route to getting cold weather out of the pole down into the mid latitudes. So despite the fact that we haven't really had much in the way of uh, blocking so far this winter, um, haven't really had a prolonged, pronounced period of um, negative AO conditions, we've done quite well for cold conditions. I mean, this December has now had two bouts of heavy snow. You have another bout of heavy snow across northern England tomorrow. So we're really not doing all that badly, given the situation that we see here with the AO. NEO is very similar. So again, this is an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere, this time in the North Atlantic rather than uh, the Arctic. Again, it's the same idea. The black line is telling us where we've been with the NEO and the red line is where the NEO has been forecast to go by GFS Ensembles. So where we are right now is very much where we are with the AO, actually. We're very close to neutral condition with the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation. And overall, we're not going to be deviating all that far from where we are uh, right now. We're going to go a little bit positive with the NAO. So we've got a week sort of positive NAO period coming up over the next uh, week to 10 days at uh, least. And actually, the GFS samples do carry that on into the uh, extended range as well. And that's roughly where we've been since around the uh, middle of December, since around here. We did go through a negative period with the NEO through October and November. So, um, um, but then we got to uh, sort of into, into December and we went positive with the NEO. And we stay positive with the NEO generally ever since, albeit quite weakly positive, not a strong uh, burst of positivity. And the Jefferson was our forecasting that we're going to go from uh, NEO neutral where we are now. 
and sort of keep it weekly positive with the NEO. So the indexes, the AO, the NEO are quite weak. They are generally around neutral or positive. But despite that, we have got, I think, more cold weather uh, coming up um, in the next sort of week to 10 days, albeit not a blocked, locked in cold spell. There's no sign of that yet. Uh, so that may come later in the winter, but at the moment, it just continues to be very unsettled and at times quite cold. So these are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks, the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're looking at BISTA uh, today, by the way. Somebody asked if I can have a look at uh, BISTA. So we're starting off, as we know, cold at the moment, around minus 5 at 8.50 HPA. Over New Year, this is January the 1st just here. Over New Year, we go actually quite mild for a few days. Uh, but then we find temperatures begin to slide back again. Another burst of Maya weather through the middle part of next week. But then after that, it looks like we're going into quite a extended period of uh, quite cold weather there uh, as we go into the second week of January. Again, dates on the bottom. So um, that's the second week of January. We finish up uh, almost at mid-January, actually, the 13th of January. So, a bit up and down with the temperatures in the next week, but in about a week's time, it looks like we go colder than average, and we stay cold on average for quite a few days. In terms of precipitation, so just lots of precipitation continuing to come through. We're going to have regular bouts of uh, wet weather. Initially, this is mostly rain during this milder period uh, here, but as we go into the extended part, where we've got these colder temperatures appearing, we may have to think again about the risk of more sleet and snow coming through. And that'll be particularly, I think, from late next week onwards and then through to the second week of uh, uh, second week of January. We may have to think about more bouts of sleet and snow then. Uh, these are the uh, surface temperature, uh, surface temperature and precipitation ensembles again for uh, Bista. So where we start right now is really quite cold, uh, but as this is 10 degrees just here, and that's where we get to around New Year's Eve. We're going up close to 10 degrees very briefly, and then the temperatures drop and go back quite close to average, really, through the opening days of January. Again, that's the 1st of January, just better. That's the 3rd of January there. Slightly milder again around the 3rd. But after that, you'll see the temperatures are sliding away uh, later next week and through into the second week of um, the second week of the month of January. So a bit up and down for temperatures for the first week, but then into the second week, obviously, we get this extended period of quite uh, cold weather. And actually, there are a few on some members that are going very cold for this second week of January. You'll notice this blue one, for example, that's producing ice days, daytime temperatures below freezing uh, all day. Uh, so I think we are seeing evidence there uh, that things are turning colder uh, from around the end of next week onwards and then going into the second week of January. And I say just plenty of precipitation spikes coming through really from beginning to end. Temperature anomalies look like that from the 28th of December to the 5th of January. We're coming out uh, a little bit colder than average for the north, a little, a little bit milder than average for the south. And uh, if these ensembles are right that we see here, I would expect this to start trending a bit colder, actually, in a few days' time. Precipitation anomalies from the 28th of December through to the 5th of January are generally above average. So uh, a wetter than average period coming up. And as things turn colder later next week, we might have to start thinking about wintry conditions coming back. By the way, most parts of Europe, again, looking very, very mild, way above average in the week ahead. The UK, Ireland and Norway uh, really, the only cold places or cold average places in uh, Europe in the uh, week ahead, most parts of Europe will be substantially uh, milder than average. Just a reminder of what's going on in America. Brutal cold has uh, pushed down into many northern parts of the states. And this is the temperature anomaly that we've got uh, for the next week, the 28th of December, 5th of January. Very substantially cold on average through all of these central 
uh, Midwest and Eastern states and uh, some places in temperature anomalies going to 20 Fahrenheit below average severe and brutal cold through much of America. The far west of western states, western America, uh, that's where we've got those warmer than average temperature anomalies. Most parts of America will be drier than average in the week ahead as well. But it really is the temperature, that's going to be the talking point. Really freezing cold conditions for much of America for the week ahead. Right, coming back to the UK, this is how things look on New Year's Eve when uh, we have got some uh, less cold air across the country. And we've still got low pressure close to us, so it's going to be unsettled going through the new year. That takes us to New Year's Day, where we've got low pressure moving through the country. That's bringing quite a bit of rain, I would have thought, and probably some colder air from the north or northwest, which might see showers turning a little bit wintry for northern parts of the country uh, on New Year's Day. This is the 2nd of January, next Tuesday. We're building up a little bit of a transient uh, ridge ahead of this next area of low pressures developing in the Atlantic. Then that gives us a wet and windy pier through the middle of next week. And for a time, it does turn uh, quite mild as well through the middle of next week. But then it's the second half of next week. It begins to turn colder again. The winds turn back to the north. The jet stream starts to slip southwards. So in the second half of next week, we go back onto the cold side of the jet and with these areas of low pressure close to the country there will be showers long as well as the rain because it's turning colder probably particularly for the north we'll have a risk of some wintry conditions returning that takes us into the weekend of uh, the 6th 7th of january on saturday the 6th we're building up this ridge within cold air so that's going to be quite a cold start to uh, the first weekend of uh, january this is sunday the 7th day 10 when we're starting to try and move low pressure back in from off the Atlantic. You'll notice a little bit of a ridge is trying to get going over Scandinavia. And this particular run of GFS, that ridge is pushed back into western Russia by these deep areas of low pressure. So it just remains quite cold, but very unsettled through and just a little bit beyond uh, day 10. This is the uh, ECMWF, uh, again for New Year's Eve. Looks unsettled with showers along the spells of rain. Probably quite windy as well. These unsettled conditions keep going into New Year's Day. It's a big night on New Year's Day. Uh, as Big Ben chimes, it looks like we're unsettled. There's probably going to be showers and longer spells of rain across the country. Quite cool temperatures as well. A little bit of a bump of high pressure for uh, Tuesday the 2nd, but then the next low pressure is racing in on uh, Wednesday the 3rd. That's bringing more wet and windy weather, probably severe gales in the far north as well. Uh, then we go through to a week away, Thursday the 4th of January. That first low pressure is getting out of the way in towards uh, Denmark. We've got more low pressure in the Atlantic, but we've got this little bump of high pressure across the country. That gives us a, probably a quieter, colder day. But then we're back to these stormy, cold conditions by Friday the 5th of January. I reckon this one could give some wintry potential, especially so uh, for the north. It's quite cold air. Uh, wrapped around that area of low pressure, I think. And uh, that could give something wintry in the northern parts of the country. And then into the first week of January, weekend of January, I should say. So this is Saturday the 6th, where we take that low pressure into the North Sea, turn the winds into the north. And that's how we finish up on Sunday the 7th of January, day 10, where we're building high pressure up over Scandinavia. We've got low pressure in the North Sea, and the winds are turning into the east. It's a shame we can't run on another... Uh, 24 hours, see what happens there. There are two possibilities. The first possibility is that this low pressure to the south of Greenland, which is a very deep low pressure, that that just steamrolls through and brings up about uh, severe gales or heavy rain. The uh, second possibility, though, is that this low pressure kind of just stalls to the south of Greenland. We send warm air evection in that direction, which pr uh, promotes the ridge, builds this ridge up over Scandinavia, and we go into a proper easterly uh, wind. And uh, it's very difficult to say where that would go. I suspect if we went on another 24 hours, we'd probably see that low pressure rolling in from off the Atlantic. We'll be coming into cold air, of course, so possibly giving... Uh, more snow initially, but then turning wind back into the west. But um, that's quite an interesting chart, and really, really is a bit inclusive where that would go if we could roll on another day or so. And that's what we're going to do with the Ensembles Watch uh, this evening, actually, see whether there are many members of the GFS Ensembles that are picking up on the possibility 
of a Scandinavian high developing through the second week of January. It is possible that a few of those ensemble members will do that, but we'll have a look at the GFS ensembles for you uh, tonight around 7 o'clock. So that's how it's looking for the next week's 10 days. We've got very unsettled conditions coming up. There'll be showers or longer spells of rain, and although it starts off relatively uh, mild over the new year. I think as we get further into the first week of January, we're probably going to see cold conditions coming back and maybe the chance of more snow, particularly in the north. Right, come back for the ensembles watch this evening. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.